if you don't program your EcoFlow power kit correctly, then it will not work correctly. So in this video, we're gonna show you guys step-by-step step everything you need to know to get it programmed and working optimally for your van. We also have a special feature that's just been added in the most recent software update for the EcoFlow Power Kit that allows you to jumpstart your battery if you've run it dead and you can't get your van started. So be sure to watch to the end because this is a hidden feature that's not easy to find. All right, let's get to it. Let's take a look at a Power Kit installation in a brand new van. This is the most simple installation that we could show you guys. It makes it really easy to see what's going on. So the power kit consists of your battery. And in this case, it's a two kilowatt battery, which is the smallest battery you can get with the kit. From the battery, the power goes to the power hub. And the power hub is what does all of the charging and manages all of the flow of power in and out of the kit. From the power kit, Next, wires run over to a distribution panel, and this is where you hook in all of your AC and DC loads to be distributed throughout the van. And then finally, there is a touchscreen display that allows you to monitor what's going on with the system and also change some of the settings. One of the great features about the EcoFlow Power Kit is that they do include all of the wiring harnesses in the kit, so you don't have to do any wiring yourself. Just one thing to note, the wiring stops at the distribution panel. So from the distribution panel on, you do have to provide your own wires. After connecting all of the components of the system together, which is a pretty fun and easy job, it's critically important that you go in and do all of the settings right away so that the system works right from the beginning. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and download the EcoFlow app for your phone. It's much easier to program through the phone app than it is through the touch screen. And as a matter of fact, some of the features that are available on the app are not available on the touchscreen at all. So you're definitely gonna need to download the app. After you've downloaded the app, then you want to add a new device. To add a new device, click on the plus sign, go down into the menu, find power kits, click on that. And then all of the local devices that are available should show up on the screen. If you're not able to find the device, then you can hold down the DC button for five seconds on the power hub and this will reset the device so that you can find it. After you've connected to the device the first thing you need to do is add a Wi-Fi network. So it is required that you have a Wi-Fi network to set all of this up from the very beginning. You should be able to connect it to your phone as a Wi-Fi network but you're going to need to get connected one way or another. Once you've connected to a Wi-Fi network you need to add the kit to your spaces and spaces are just different places that you might have EcoFlow equipment. So maybe you have some at home, some at work, and some in your van or your boat. This just allows you to sort of segment the equipment that you have so that's easier to find. Now the first thing you want to do after you've connected to the new power kit is go and update the firmware. Go up into the settings menu, find firmware, click on that, and check to see if there are any new updates. It may require several updates in order to get the system current, so after you've installed the first one, it will let you know if there are more updates to install. Now that you've updated the firmware, let's go ahead and take a look at what you can see in the app. So the first thing I like to do is check out the battery settings. So click on the display where it shows the battery percentage. And now take a look at the battery. This will show you if you have one, two, or three batteries connected. When we're on the battery screen, up in the right-hand corner, you'll click on the settings menu, and this will allow you to set your charge limit. Now the charge limit is really ideally should be kept between 50 and 80% for to maintain the best battery health. It's definitely okay to charge up to 100%, especially before you're about to go on a trip and you need maximum power in your batteries. But the goal is not to always keep your batteries at 100% if you want them to last the longest. You should be scaling it down to somewhere in the 80% range to top them out. And this setting allows you to do that. Next, you can set your discharge limit. And the discharge limit just keeps the battery from going completely dead. So wherever you set this at, it will shut off the AC and DC output once it's reached this level. And you definitely do not want your batteries to go completely dead. By keeping a certain percentage in the batteries, you can keep all of the other pieces of equipment live, 
which allows the solar charger to work if the sun comes out, it allows the alternator to charge if you start the vehicle back up, and it allows the shore power to charge. If you completely let the batteries go dead, you're not gonna be able to do any of these things, and also you won't even know what's going on with the batteries because the screen will be dead, so you won't be able to tell what percentage the batteries were at. And finally from the screen, you can set the screen time out. So however long you want to keep the screen on before it goes dark, you can set it here. All right, next we'll go to the input screen. And once again, you'll have a settings menu up in the right hand corner of the input screen. So if you click on that, first we'll take it to the AC input current. Just so you guys know, the standard plug that you might plug into at your home is typically 15 amps. Now, if you go to a campground and you find the larger plugs, those will be 30 amps typically, but you need to set this setting at whatever the maximum capacity is for the circuit that you're pulling from. And one thing of note here, you have your charging current and your pass-through current. So the total input current is at which you're gonna charge the batteries and then also the pass-through current, like let's say you're running a piece of equipment while charging, there's gonna be two loads together. So you wanna set this at the maximum current for that circuit. So typically that's gonna be 15 amps. Okay, the next thing to do is to set the alternator input current. And this is a really important one that there's some confusion around. So let's go ahead and go through it. The alternator input current is between five amps and 70 amps on the first circuit, which is called alternator one. And so you wanna set this based on the charge rate that you want, but also considering that you don't wanna overtax your alternator. So some people ask the question, why not just kick it all the way up to 70 amps and get the max charge rate possible? And the reason you wouldn't wanna do that all the time is because pulling a higher amperage from the alternator does put an additional burden on it. They tend to heat up and will definitely reduce the lifespan. So if you're running an OEM alternator on a sprinter van, it's generally acceptable to pull 30 amps from it. So that's typically where we set the charge rate. But if you do need to charge quicker, it is okay to dial it up to 70 amps, but you wanna make sure that the van is moving because that will help cool the alternator. And unless you have a high output alternator, pulling upwards of 50 to 70 amps will definitely reduce the lifespan of your alternator. So that's something to keep in mind. The final setting here is the charge while idling toggle. And this just determines whether or not while you're idling the vehicle, whether you'll be pulling anything from the alternator at all. And the reason you wouldn't want to charge while idling is because there's no air passing by the alternator to cool it down. If you're just running between 5 and 30 amps of charging, generally it's okay to charge while idling because you're not pulling that much from the alternator. But as soon as you go above 30 amps as your set input current, it's probably a good idea to turn off the charge while idling. So you're only going to be sending a charge from the alternator to the batteries when the van is moving. Okay, so now let's take a look at the output screen. So we'll go in here and once again, up in the right hand corner, there is a settings menu. And let's first take a look at the AC output. You can toggle the AC output on and off from here. And it's a good idea to turn off the AC circuit when you're not using it because the inverter that's in the power hub will be pulling power just to keep the AC current live. And if you're not using it, it's just an unnecessary power draw. So we do recommend turning it off when you're not using it. So you can go in and edit each of the circuits and give them a new name. And there's also a list of icons that you can select just so that it's a little bit easier to identify which loads are on each circuit. And just as a note, each of these AC circuits is controllable from the touchscreen and from the phone app. And this is just a really useful feature because let's say you have six different AC circuits and one of them is running, for instance, a Starlink, which pulls a lot of power. You can go in and just turn the Starlink off when you don't need it and still be able to use AC power outlets and induction cooktop or any of your other um, utilities that run off of AC power. All right, so now let's go into the DC output and you can also edit these circuits as well, giving them a unique name and a unique icon. Just as a note, on the DC side of the circuits, six of them are controllable on the app. That's the first six. And then number seven through 12 are basically always on. So there's no switch for them. So only connect things to those circuits that you're willing to always have powered up when the DC output is on. All right, so back to the home screen, we can click on 
the bars up in the upper right hand corner and that will give us a history of all of the input and output from the power hub. And this is a really useful feature because it allows you to look back, see how much power you've been taking in from your solar and your alternator and your shore power, and then also take a look at how much power has been going out through your AC and DC circuits. This screen allows you to look at the past day, the past week, or the past month. So you can just click through and pick which time frame that you want to see. All right, now let's take a look at the main settings menu. So from the home screen, go up into the upper right, right hand corner, get into that settings menu. And the first thing you can do is rename your system. The next tab is device sharing. So this allows you to share this device with multiple different accounts. So if there's different people in the family that wanna be able to control it from their phone, this is where you go in and share it. Otherwise, it's just tied to one account. The important thing here is before you send an email to the account that you want to share it with, you need to set up an EcoFlow account with that email address first. So whoever that is, have them download the EcoFlow app and set up their own account and then do the sharing. Now let's take a look at the timeout menu. Uh, this just allows you to set a certain amount of time before the system will shut down. So this is especially useful for the AC output Remember the AC inverter pulls power all the time that it's on. So this is where you could go in and set a timeout. So if you didn't remember to turn it off, let's say after two hours of no use, the system will turn off the AC inverter automatically, saving you power and not having any unnecessary draws. And now let's take a look at the advanced settings. This is where you can set the input AC Hertz and that is 60 in the United States. Also, this is where you set the DC output. So in the EcoFlow power system, you have the choice of outputting 12 or 24 volt power through the distribution panel. The next setting is your alternator cable length. So the EcoFlow power kit does come with the harness to plug in to connect your alternator to the power hub. This harness can be shortened just by cutting the wires at the terminal end that's gonna to connect to the battery. You do wanna keep these as short as possible just to be as efficient as possible. And this is where you can go in and make those changes. Please note also that you could use three different power cords to connect your alternator to the power hub as shown here, but that's also gonna prevent you from plugging in solar panels or other DC input currents. All right, and now we've come to the new feature that EcoFlow has added in the latest software update and it's called the emergency function. And what is going on here is that we already have a connection from your battery to the power hub in order to charge your EcoFlow battery. This is essentially a two-way system now. So if you run your battery dead and you can't start your vehicle, then you can go in here, toggle this switch, and it will charge your starter battery from your EcoFlow battery. Now, please note, this is not the same as jump-starting a van with another vehicle, which is typically gonna be a high voltage and high current situation. This is actually using, using a charger that's in the power hub. So one thing to note, you do need to let this charge up, I would say for at least 10 minutes, maybe longer depending on how deeply the starter battery has been drained. But don't expect to flip the toggle here and then immediately be able to start the van. It's a much slower charge than if you were to do an actual jump start. And then one of the nice features here, once you've charged the battery, if it gets up to 13 volts, then this is automatically gonna switch back to alternator charging the house battery. So that's an automatic function. And just so you guys know, this is very useful if you do have excess power in your EcoFlow battery, say you're topped up and you're still getting solar power, you can go ahead and flip the switch just to keep your house battery topped up because anytime you drain those, especially if you're sitting for multiple days, the starter battery will kind of, because you're opening doors and lights are coming on, it will drain down. So this is just an easy way to keep it topped up when you're on the road. One of the things I think EcoFlow missed here is burying this feature too deep in the settings menu. It's really hard to find. And if you do have a dead battery and you need to get going, I think that they should put a switch on the home screen of the app and also in an obvious place on the um, display so that when you need to start the battery, you just click the button and you don't have to dig around for it when you're probably already a little bit frustrated. All right, onto the help menu. There are some FAQs that you can look at here. There's also a button for EcoFlow support. If you guys have ever tried to contact EcoFlow support, 
you know that they're typically pretty hard to get a hold of and you don't always get your questions answered right away. And this is one of the services that we offer when you buy any of these kits from us. Just go ahead and reach out to us directly if you have any questions. We're gonna be able to get back to you a lot sooner and probably have more experience with your specific situation than the EcoFlow support does. All right, in the final menu is the specification. So if you need to look at what uh, version of software you have or a serial number on any of your pieces of equipment, let's say you're trying to get something replaced, this is where you'll find it without having to dig around and get to the actual physical piece of equipment itself. A couple of final things, since it does have a warranty, don't forget to register your power kit. You can do that through the app. And then finally, check back into the app every once in a while to make sure that all of your equipment is updated to the latest firmware version, because we have noticed that some of the issues that people have had with the kits do get corrected with new firmware updates. All right, so that is how you get all of the settings correct so that your EcoFlow power kit works as it's expected to. And we would really like to hear from you guys if you have a power kit installed. How is it going for you? How has it been working? We have gotten some questions. Since this is a newer kit, people have asked, hey, is it reliable? How is the quality? And we'd like to hear your guys' feedback so we can get a broad range of answers. I can tell you that the EcoFlow power kit does have a five-year warranty. And in the, let's say, 100 kits that we have worked with in the past six months, we have had to replace a couple piece of, pieces of equipment, specifically one or two power hubs, and then we had some solar panels that weren't working correctly. Fortunately, with the power kit, changing out a piece of equipment is really, really easy. And in every case so far, we've been able to get that new piece of equipment installed and have had good luck with the systems overall. All right, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you have any questions and we will see you guys again next time.